The fork slipped from my hand, clattering against the plate. Clarissa's words hung in the air like a bad smell. I've decided to sell my house and move in with you all. It will be such a blessing to have the family under one roof again. My mother-in-law smiled that sickly sweet smile she always used when getting her way. Beckett sat frozen beside me, his brow furrowed. Finn stared down at his half-eaten meatloaf, mercifully oblivious to the bombshell Clarissa had just dropped. That's quite a decision, Mother, Beckett finally managed. Don't you think you should have discussed it with us first? Clarissa waved a ringed hand. Oh, I didn't want to burden you both with it until I'd made up my mind. This way it's settled. No need for any fusses. My heart pounded as her real message sank in. She would be immovable on this, as she always was. Steam rolling her way into our lives, consequences be damned. I appreciate your, uh, consideration, I said carefully. But Beckett and I will need to discuss what that would look like for our family. There are a lot of factors to work through. Clarissa fixed me with a pointed look. Like what, dear? I'll have my own space, so no inconvenience on your end. I simply want to be closer to my grandchild and spend my twilight years surrounded by loved ones. Surely you can't object to that? But the subtle condescension dripped from her tone. The implication that I would deprive her of family, of Finn, if I objected. Classic manipulation. Mom. Beckett ran a hand over his face. We can't make this decision right now at the dinner table. Well, I don't see why not, Clarissa said airily. I think we'd all sleep better with this settled, don't you? She turned to Finn, her eyes going misty. You'd love having your dear old grandma around every day, wouldn't you, sweetheart? Finn looked up, puzzled. Uh, sure, I guess. There, you see, the matter is decided. She beamed at me triumphantly. My stomach twisted. I knew the reality. There would be no peaceful twilight years. This was about control, plain and simple. The start of her ultimate power play to run this household her way. I opened my mouth, ready to protest, to shut this down before it began. But Beckett's pained expression stopped me. He already looked so conflicted, so troubled by having to buck his beloved mother's wishes. So instead, I simply forced a smile and said, We'll discuss it tonight after dinner, dear. The first battle was lost, but the war was only just beginning. Clarissa wasted no time making her presence felt. The very next morning, she was in the kitchen bright and early, tutting at the mess. You really should start your day earlier, Juniper, dear. A properly kept home is the hallmark of a good wife and mother. I grit my teeth, biting back the retort on my tongue as Finn wandered in, still bleary-eyed. Clarissa immediately zoned in on his unkempt hair and rumpled T-shirt. Good heavens, does that boy ever look presentable? She aimed a disapproving look my way. You'd think his mother would take a bit more pride. I'm proud of Finn just the way he is, I said tightly. Now if you'll excuse me, I need to start breakfast. Her lips pursed, but Clarissa merely nodded and stepped aside to make way for me. For now. Over the next few weeks, her comments became a constant needling drone. Nitpicking my cooking, my housekeeping, my parenting— always with that same sugary sweet smile plastered on her face. That's not how I used to make the meatloaf, dear. Let me show you the proper way. Did you not notice that stain on the sofa? Housekeeping was so much easier when the children were younger. Speaking of children, you simply must put your foot down with Finn's attitude. He's headed down a troubled path without strict discipline. The worst came at Finn's school arts exhibition. He had worked so hard on his painting series— Prezipping quietly in his room for weeks. I was bursting with pride as we circulated the gallery, admiring his vibrant, expressive work. Until Clarissa's shrill voice cut through the crowd. Well, I must say I'm quite underwhelmed by this. Juvenile scribbling. Constant doodling is no path to success. Finn's face drained of color. I watched his shoulders hunch, his eyes drop to the floor as snickers rippled through the event hall. Mother, Beckett hissed. What is wrong with you? Clarissa blinked innocently. What I'm simply stating facts. Hard critique is the only way he'll improve. That's enough. I cut her off, rage bubbling up within me. You will not humiliate my son like that, do you understand? For a moment, Clarissa actually looked taken aback. Then her mouth set in a hard line, and she fixed me with an icy look. Your son, is it? We'll see about that. 
With that parting shot, she turned on her heel and stormed out, leaving me to deal with the fallout of her callous outburst. As Finn struggled not to cry and the other parents looked on with thinly veiled judgment, I saw only red. Something had to be done, before Clarissa destroyed everything I held dear. The air was thick with tension when we got home that night. Beckett paced the living room, running his hands through his hair. I can't believe she did that, he muttered for the tenth time, so cruel and uncalled for. This is exactly why I didn't want her moving in. The words burst from me in a torrent. She has no boundaries, no filter, and she'll keep lashing out and humiliating us until she gets her way about everything. Beckett's head whipped around, his eyes flashing. Don't talk about my mother that way. I gaped at him. After what she did to Finn, you're taking her side? Of course not. He sank onto the couch, cradling his head. But she's still my mother. We can't just kick her out on the street. Even though she's making our lives miserable? He looked up at me imploringly. She'll get better, June. Once she's settled in, I'm sure this behavior will stop. We just have to set some clear boundaries. I barked out a harsh laugh. Boundaries? Have you met your mother? She doesn't respect any boundaries except her own. Beckett flinched at my tone, and I instantly regretted my harsh words. This wasn't his fault, I knew that. I'm sorry, I said, my voice softening. You're right, we can't just kick her out, but we also can't just ignore how toxic she's being. He opened his mouth to respond, but a loud clatter from the hallway cut him off. Stomping footsteps, then the icy tones of my mother-in-law. Well, I certainly hope you're proud of yourselves, squabbling over me like selfish children. Clarissa swept into the room, her face thunderous. In her hand was a ceramic figure from the mantelpiece, one that had been in Beckett's family for generations. Your petty arguing must have knocked this priceless heirloom to the floor. An object like this belongs in a museum, not in the home of such careless ingrates. My mouth dropped open. I clearly remembered dusting the mantel that morning. The figurine had been securely in place. Beckett jumped to his feet. Mom, that's not what happened at all. You're overreacting. Am I? She rounded on me, eyes blazing. Well then, Juniper, please do tell us what careless act toppled this precious artifact. I'm all ears. I opened and closed my mouth at a total loss. Because I knew, deep down, that her accusation was patently false. Clarissa's thin lips curled into a smile of pure vindication. That's what I thought. Really, Beckett, I don't know how you can allow such a thoughtless, messy woman to raise your child. I saw red. Before I could stop myself, I stepped forward and slapped the vile woman straight across that smug face. Clarissa's head whipped to the side, her hand flying to her reddened cheek. She stared at me in utter shock. Get out, I hissed through gritted teeth, before I do something worse. Juniper, Beckett's voice cracked like a whip. What the hell is wrong with you? The utter betrayal in his eyes sliced into my heart. In that moment it was like the man I loved was a total stranger. While Clarissa worked to regain her composure, I took a shaky breath and held Beckett's gaze. I'm done being your mother's punching bag, I said, my voice low. Either you put a stop to this, or you'll have to choose between us. Heavy silence fell over the room. Clarissa was watching avidly, her lips curved into that same sickly smile I'd come to despise. Beckett's face was utterly inscrutable. I didn't wait for his answer. I simply turned and left the room, chest heaving. The war had been declared. There would be no more playing nice. The next few days were tense, to say the least. Beckett and I moved through the house like ghosts, avoiding each other in an uneasy truce. Clarissa, smug as ever, acted like nothing had happened. Pleasant morning, isn't it? She'd chirp as I grabbed my coffee and rushed out the door to work. Beckett wouldn't even meet my gaze. It couldn't go on like this. Either we dealt with Clarissa head-on, or our family would be torn apart. But I needed ammunition, a way to prove to Beckett just how vindictive and manipulative his mother truly was. That proof came from an unlikely source, Mrs. Pennington from next door. I was trimming the hedges when she popped her head over the fence. Everything okay, dear? You look simply haunted. I paused, struggling with how much to reveal. Before I could stop myself, it all came pouring out. Clarissa's cruelty, the wedge she was driving between Beckett and me, her deranged lies. Mrs. Pennington listened intently, clucking her tongue. I knew that woman was trouble from the moment she moved in. Mark my words, she's poison. My eyes widened. 
You've dealt with her before? In our neighborhood social club, she caused no end of dramatics. Mrs. Pennington's eyes narrowed, kicked up an unholy fuss until she got her way about every little thing, turned everyone against each other with her malicious gossip and lies. Why, by the time she left, the club was in utter shambles. I recognized the twisted genius of Clarissa's tactics all too clearly, divide and conquer through relentless manipulation. If you've got recordings of her outrageous behavior, I'd be happy to corroborate your story, Mrs. Pennington added. My mind began whirling with the possibilities. I needed to gather evidence, proof that Clarissa's sugary words hid razor-sharp malice. That night, I dug out my old voice recorder and installed it in the living room, hitting record before the three of us sat down for an evening chat. My, what lovely curtains, Clarissa gushed as soon as we got settled. Though I do think the salmon shades would be more complimentary in this space. I tensed, ready for her to let the insults fly about my decorating skills, but she simply smiled placidly and took a long sip of tea. The jibes started small at first. Judgmental little quips about my cooking, my outfit, my rebellious views on parenting as compared to her traditionalist ways. Then, right on cue, Clarissa turned her focus on to Beckett. Really, dear, I'm a bit worried about this new project of yours at work. It all sounds so very... risky. Perhaps you should have consulted me before pitching it to your bosses. Thanks for the concern, Mom, Beckett replied through gritted teeth. But I've got it handled, Clarissa tutted soft softly. Yes, well, we'll see won't we? I simply worry you've bitten off more than you can chew. Juniper's influence doesn't exactly inspire confidence, if you know what I mean. You could have heard a pin drop. I glanced sidelong at Beckett, whose face was mottled red with barely contained rage. That's enough, mother, he warned in a low growl. But Clarissa merely shrugged, a sly smile playing about her lips. I'm only speaking the truth, dear. Hours of recordings like these followed over the next few weeks, each one making my heart pound harder, my anger towards this vile woman growing. By the time I gathered the evidence and Mrs. Pennington's testimony, I was ready to unleash the full force of Clarissa's own depraved behavior right back at her. No more playing games. This ended now. I waited until Beckett was out running errands with Finn before calling Clarissa into the living room. She glided in, taking a seat with her usual breezy arrogance. What can I do for you, dear? Finally ready to accept my advice on redecorating this drab space? I took a deep breath to steady my nerves. Cut the act, Clarissa. I'm done playing games. Her eyes narrowed, but the smirk didn't leave her lips. Whatever do you mean? Instead of answering, I simply pressed play on the voice recorder. Her own shrill tones filled the room, spitting vicious remarks about Beckett's incompetence, insults about my failings as a wife and mother, nasty gossip designed to turn us against each other. Clarissa's face remained impassive as the recordings played, but I could see the muscle twitching in her jaw. When the litany of cruelty finally ended, she gave a simpering shrug, so I've made a few offhanded comments here and there. I was only trying to help guide you, make suggestions for your family's well-being. Don't insult my intelligence, I snapped. These were calculated attacks, meant to undermine me and drive a wedge between Beckett and me. Your little dominance games. Those beady eyes glinted with something like respect. Very perceptive of you, Juniper. Though I'd have thought my motivations would be obvious from the start. I surged to my feet, fists clenched at my sides. Why, Clarissa? Why are you so hell-bent on destroying my family? She rose as well, lips curling into an oily smile. Because this was never about your family, you silly girl. It's about power, ensuring I have final say over everything in my twilight years. And you were the only one standing in my way. A chill ran down my spine, but I held her gaze steadily. Well, your little gambit stops right now. I'm done letting you manipulate and debase us. Oh? One sculpted eyebrow arched delicately. And just, what are your terms for that, pray tell? I took a step closer, my voice low and menacing. You're going to leave. Get out of our lives and never contact us again. In return, I'll give you enough money to pay off your little debt problem, shall we say? Clarissa's mask slipped for just an instant, shock flitting across her features before the stony disdain returned. I allowed myself a grim smile. It seemed my snooping had paid off. Well, well, you've certainly been a busy little thing, haven't you? Her lip curled. 
though I have to wonder what my darling son will think about your strong-arming tactics. He'll think whatever he wants, I said coolly, but he'll have proof of exactly the kind of manipulative snake you are first. Our eyes bored into each other, a silent battle of wills stretching between us. Finally, Clarissa gave a stiff nod. Very well, you've made your point. I accept your generous offer, but be warned, the day will come when you regret pushing me away for good. The threat could have chilled my blood, but all I felt in that moment was an immense sense of relief. At long last, this nightmare would be over. My hands were shaking as I laid out the place settings for our monthly family dinner. Clarissa sat primly on the couch, shooting me disdainful looks every few minutes. She hadn't taken my ultimatum well, that was for sure. The doorbell rang, announcing Beckett and Finn's arrival, showtime. Hello, my dears. Clarissa was all sugary sweetness as they walked in, air kissing their cheeks. I'm simply famished, aren't you? Beckett eyed her warily but said nothing as we all took our seats around the dining table. An uneasy silence fell, only the clinking of utensils on china plates to fill it. Finn squirmed in his seat, looking from me to his grandmother with narrowed eyes. Finally, he couldn't take it anymore. Okay, what's the deal, he blurted out. You two have been acting super weird for weeks. I took a deep, steadying breath as all eyes swung towards me. Here went nothing. You're right, Finn, and it's time the truth finally came out. Clarissa snorted delicately. I beg your pardon? What bizarre melodrama is this now? Ignoring her, I produced the thick manila envelope I'd compiled, sliding it across the table towards Beckett. In that envelope is proof of who your mother really is, I said, keeping my voice carefully level. The manipulation, the cruelty, the pathological need to destroy us from the inside. Juniper, Clarissa gasped in overblown outrage. How dare you? But I cut her off with a sharp look. Don't bother denying it. I have hours of recordings, transcripts, testimonies, everything documenting your deranged vendetta against me and this family. Beckett said nothing, staring down at the innocuous manila envelope like a snake about to strike. Finn shifted closer, craning his neck for a better view. When Clarissa spoke again, her syrupy tone had vanished, leaving only an icy rasp. So you wish to slander and defame me? Very well. Get it over with, then. With trembling fingers, Beckett opened the envelope and began rifling through the papers inside. His brow furrowed deeper with every transcript, every damning piece of evidence. This, this can't be, he mumbled, shaking his head slowly. It's all true, I said, quiet but firm. Every vicious word out of her mouth, caught on tape. I clicked the voice recorder, letting Clarissa's shrill diatribes fill the air once more. Useless, ungrateful child. Of course he can't handle that deal without my input. No wonder Juniper is such a dismal failure at parenting. It's a miracle the boy isn't a delinquent yet. Perhaps I should take over the family finances before that silly girl drives us into the poorhouse. At last, I stopped the playback, letting the weight of proof speak for itself. Clarissa's face was mottled purple, a twisting sneer of pure loathing fixed on me. But I didn't flinch, didn't look away. The silence stretched out agonizingly until finally, Beckett looked up at his mother. There were tears in his eyes. Mom, how could you? His voice broke on the last word. Clarissa actually laughed then, a harsh, barking sound. Don't play the wounded innocent with me. I was simply doing what was necessary to protect this family from ruin. By sabotaging us every chance you got, I couldn't stop myself from interjecting. By turning everyone against each other, that's what was necessary. Of course it was. Clarissa was on her feet now, shoulders heaving with rage. I could see quite clearly how incompetent you both are. Beckett's career hanging by a thread, this house falling to ruin, poor Finn turned into a sullen delinquent under your lax, idiotic parenting. She whirled on Finn then, fixing him with a stare that could freeze lava. Just look at the way you present yourself. Sloppy? No ambition. Do you really want to end up a failure like your so-called parents? Don't talk about my parents like that. The retort was shouted with such raw fury, such rebellious vehemence, that we all fell silent in shock. Finn was on his feet too now, fists clenched and shaking at his sides as he faced down his grandmother with bravery I could scarcely believe. Mom and Dad have been nothing but supportive and loving. You're the failure, Grandma, and after everything I just heard, I want you out of our lives for good. 
Clarissa looked as though she'd been slapped. That was my son, showing the same fierce determination I felt in my bones to protect our little family, no matter what. With a cry of pure outrage, Clarissa swept from the room, nearly taking the front door off its hinges as she left. For a long moment, the three of us simply stared at each other in stunned silence. Then Beckett crossed the room in two long strides and crushed me in a desperate embrace. "'I'm so sorry,' he rasped against my neck. "'I'm so, so sorry.' We held each other for a long time after that, our family battered and bruised but still standing strong against anything the cruel world could throw at us. And for the first time in years I could breathe freely once more. The silence that followed Clarissa's dramatic exit was deafening. Beckett and I simply held each other, letting the roaring in our ears gradually subside. Finn hovered nearby, looking shaken. At last, Beckett pulled back, cradling my face in his hands. His eyes were red-rimmed glistening with unshed tears. "'June, I—I I don't know what to say. How could I have been so blind?' I covered his hands with my own, giving them a reassuring squeeze. "'She's a master manipulator, Bex. She knows exactly what strings to pull.' He shook his head slowly. "'But you tried to warn me, over and over, and I just dismissed you, took her side every time.' A muscle ticked in his jaw as his voice dropped to a hoarse whisper. "'Some husband and father I turned out to be. "'Hey,' I pecked him gently on the lips. We can't change the past, but we did what was needed to protect our family. That's what matters. She's right, Dad. Finn stepped forward, his usually sullen expression giving way to something solemn and resolved. You guys fought for us, for our family unit. That's what real parents do. They put their kids first, no matter what sick crap gets thrown at them. He looked down, scuffing at the hardwood with his sneaker toe. I'm... I'm sorry I haven't really appreciated that, or noticed how much you've both sacrificed while that evil witch was making all your lives hell. Beckett pulled Finn into a fierce hug, holding him tightly. I felt the moisture prick at my own eyes watching them, my two favorite people, survivors of the worst betrayal. No more apologies, Beckett said gruffly. We're a team again now, the three of us. Anything else, we handle it together. United front, Finn nodded wordlessly against his father's shoulder. When they finally separated, all traces of the moody teenager had left his face. He looked solemnly determined. So, what's the plan? Do we go to the cops, file a report about her? I shook my head. As satisfying as that sounds, it's not worth dragging this ugliness out any further. She's gone from our lives now. Best to let her disappear for good. Beckett nodded in agreement. There is one last loose end to tie up, though. He withdrew a check from his shirt pocket, holding it out to me with a rueful smile. Your settlement fee for getting rid of dear old mom seems like you've got a real head for this revenge scheme stuff. I rolled my eyes, but couldn't stop the grin from spreading across my face as I took the check. Please, it was a piece of cake compared to the drama of getting you two geniuses to do your homework every night. Finn snorted, some of his old teenage snark returning. I relished the sound so familiar and comforting, after the nightmare we'd endured. Later that evening, I made the inevitable call to Clarissa. She answered on the third ring, her tone as cutting as I expected. Well, you've had your fun, exposed me as a villain for the storybooks. Are you quite satisfied? I nearly bit my tongue, forcibly restraining the caustic retort. No more vicious back and forths, it was time to break this cycle forever. I'm wiring you the money to cover your debts and get back on your feet, Clarissa. Use it well, live your life however you want, from now on. I paused, taking a deep breath. Just never contact us again, or there will be consequences. For a moment I thought she might try to argue, to manipulate her way back into our lives as she'd always done. But finally she gave a stiff nod. Very well. This chapter of our lives is over, it seems though I shudder to think of the dysfunction you'll raise my great-grandchildren in. The barb hit its mark, as did her parting laugh.
stunned silence. But instead of anger, I felt only pity for the miserable, petty woman. As I hung up the phone, I knew our family was truly free of her twisted games forever. Over the next few weeks and months, Beckett, Finn, and I went to therapy, both together and individually. We processed the emotional wounds Clarissa had inflicted, made a plan to rebuild our bonds of trust and open communication. It wasn't easy, not by any stretch. There were setbacks, conflicts that reopened old scars, but we persevered, drawing strength from each other. Slowly, steadily, the darkness lifted. Beckett and I rediscovered the passionate love that first drew us together. Finn's perpetual sulk faded as he opened up about his hurt and insecurities. We became an invincible unit once more. And as for me, I felt a profound sense of catharsis and triumph. I had been forced to fight for my family's very existence, and I'd won. No, we'd won. Because there was no victory without the three of us. <sighs> Boldly staring down malice and emerging with our humanity, our unbreakable core, intact, that knowledge made every hardship worth it. My life's purpose achieved. The moving truck rumbled up Clarissa's driveway, an oversized metal beast hungrily awaiting its cargo. I watched from the sidelines, arms folded across my chest. Well, well, isn't this a heartwarming family farewell? Clarissa swept out of the front door as elegantly poised as ever despite the circumstances. She zeroed in on me immediately, those hawk-like eyes glinting with residual malice. I must say, Juniper, I'm almost impressed. Scheming to kick your own mother-in-law out on the street, it's delightfully cutthroat of you. My jaw clenched, but I held my tongue no more rising to her barbed taunts ever again. Beckett emerged from the house then, Finn trailing behind with a sullen expression. He strode over to me, slipping a protective arm around my waist. That's enough, mother. We had a deal. You take the money and resettle elsewhere. No more drama. Clarissa's thin lips compressed into a tight line, but she gave a stiff nod. Yes, yes, of course. A deal is a deal, after all. Her gaze flicked towards Finn, who was determinedly avoiding her eyes. Though I do hope you'll allow me one last word with my grandson before I'm so tragically banished. The derisive sarcasm in her tone made my skin crawl, but Beckett simply shrugged. That's up to Finn. We're not going to force him. An uncomfortable silence fell. I could see the wheels turning in Clarissa's mind as she considered whether or not to push the issue. Thankfully, Finn made the choice for her. I don't have anything to say, he mumbled, finally meeting her stare with undisguised contempt. Not after everything you put this family through. For a fraction of a second, Clarissa's mask slipped, revealing the unholy rage boiling underneath. Then, just as quickly, the cool disdain returned. Very well. Can't say I'm surprised at such petulant disrespect given your subpar upbringing. One final jab before sweeping past us towards the idling moving truck, as the movers began efficiently loading up the last remnants of Clarissa's presence in our lives, Beckett turned to me with a small, sad smile. I know this was extreme, but you did what needed to be done for all of us. Thank you. I laced my fingers through his, giving his hand a soft squeeze. We're family, I said simply. Till the end. The journey ahead wouldn't be easy, I knew that. Old wounds ran deep and there was bound to be more emotional fallout from Clarissa's torment to confront. But at least now it would be just the three of us, shoulder to shoulder, no malignant outside force driving us apart. Over the coming weeks and months, we slowly but surely put the painful pieces back together. Beckett and I attended joint counseling, relearning to openly communicate without fear of undermining from Clarissa. Finn started seeing a therapist, too, to work through the damage of having such a toxic...
moments in his life from an early age. There were setbacks, absolutely. Clarissa's cruel words would slither unbidden into my mind at random moments, filling me with impotent anger and hurt. Beckett admitted to still struggling with guilt over being so blind to her true nature for so long. And Finn? Well, he was a typical teenager, after all. His old sullen habits would creep back in without warning. But we took each challenge as it came, as a team. With Clarissa finally out of our lives for good, we were free to heal and reconnect on our own terms. The day I knew we'd truly put the past behind us came unexpectedly. One crisp autumn evening at the dinner table. There was no special occasion, nothing to mark the moment as significant. Beckett and I chatted about mundane things, work, errands, the new movie we wanted to see over the weekend. Finn sat across from us, chewing thoughtfully as he listened. Then, out of nowhere, he set down his fork and looked up at me with those same serious eyes that had first showed his backbone against Clarissa's manipulation. You know, I get it now. Why you fought so hard to get rid of Grandma? I paused, startled, sharing a glance with Beckett. We'd thought that painful chapter of our lives firmly closed. Finn scratched at the back of his neck, suddenly bashful. I mean, I always knew she was bad news in a general way, but seeing how far you went to protect us, risking everything, not just thinking of yourself. He shook his head slowly. That's what real parents do, you know? They'd go through anything for their kids, no matter what. My vision blurred with grateful tears as I reached across the table to grip Finn's hand. You've got that right, kiddo. No matter what. In that moment, I felt something profound shift inside me. The last lingering tendrils of anger and hurt over Clarissa's cruelty simply evaporated. Whatever resentment or bitterness had been weighing me down for so long just dispersed into the ether. As I looked around at my little family, my heart swelled with love. This was everything, the core truth that had kept me fighting through our darkest days. Beckett and Finn were my world, and I would walk through fire a thousand times to keep them safe and happy. The past was just that, past. We had survived the worst betrayal and come out battered, but bonded and stronger than ever before. A new chapter was unfolding for us, one of healing and rediscovered joy. And this time I thought with a serene smile there would be no outside forces to disrupt our hard-earned peace. Just us, forging our own path forward as a united, radiant family.